Welcome to the lecture on fundamentals of image compression. And in this lecture, we will be dealing with uh, the need for image compression and uh, various compression techniques. So a brief introduction. In image compression, uh, with the growth of multimedia technology over the past decades, the demand, demand for image information or digital information increases dramatically. And most of these informations are constituted by digital images. So the, the problem of reducing the amount of data required to represent an image rises. So from, so we can say image compression is a process of reducing the amount of data required to represent an image. Or in a mathematical ground, we can represent it as or we can define it as image compression is mapping from a higher dimensional space to a lower dimensional space. This means for an actual image will be usually represented with a, the large number of pixels. When this image is compressed, the number of pixels used to represent the compressed image will be much lesser, which of course results in a reduction of its dimension for all image compression techniques are dimensionality reduction operations. So we can see uh, one example of this image compression, a cat image. The leftmost figure, you can see a cat image, original cat, cat image. The middle one is a moderately compressed cat image. And the rightmost one, which is a maximally compressed cat image. And um, as the compression, uh, as we go for compression, the quality of the image degrades. But for some degree, the middle one, we cannot find uh, much, uh, we can, uh, for a human visual system, we cannot find much differences between the first and second. But uh, in, when it comes to the data or the size of the image, it is compressed to a great extent. So this is from an uh, example of uh, image compression. And in general, we can represent uh, the, the compression process by using this diagram where fxy, fxy represents the original image, the uncompressed image. Uh, when, it be, when it is being passed to a compression algorithm, a compression unit, uh, it compresses that image and uh, the major applications of the compression comes in transmission as well as storage, transmit and storage. So uh, while you employ compression for transmission, the, the transmission rate increases. If you're employing compression for storage, the, the size required for storage reduces. These are some of the applications where we go for compression. And we'll get back a estimate of the actual image, just F cap of X, Y, after passing these through a decompression algorithm, decompressor decompression algorithm. So this is the general framework of image compression technique. We'll see the need for image compression. So we can consider uh, image having a dimension 640 into 480, 640, 480 uh, dimension image. So if it is a color image, it will take uh, almost one megabyte of space. Just assume a uh, ordinary image having a dimension of 640 into 480, uh, since it's a color image, it will be 640 into 480 into 3. To represent a color image, we require 3 plane having this dimension. So it will require 1 MB of space. Or if you consider a high definition image, high definition image, having a dimension 1600 into 1200, which require almost 5.76 MB. 5.76 MB, almost the size of four floppy drives. So this is the, the, the context where we go for image compression. The digital image requires huge amount of space for storage and large bandwidth for transmission. If you are going for a image compression algorithm, the it will reduce the amount, the, the it will reduce the storage, it will reduce the storage requirements and increase transmission rates. So that is the need for image compression. We'll see in detail how it is being achieved. The co image compression is mainly achieved by using a property of 
natural image called uh, redundancy and uh, irrelevancy redundancy and irrelevancy redundancy means duplication if you have redundant bits data bits or duplicate data bits it's called redundancy whereas irrelevancy is more related to the human visual system hvs human visual system irrelevancy means the part of image information that will not be noticed by human visual system some in, some image informations are not much relevant or noticeable for a human visual system even when it comes to the primary colors like rgb uh the green considers to be more relevant than other uh, primary colors so it's because of the human the properties of human visual system so that these two properties the redundancy and irrelevancy of natural images are being employed to for compression so we'll see the various types of compression uh, various types of redundancy in images the the various types of redundancy are primarily we can classify that into two statistical redundancy and uh, psycho visual redundancy psycho visual redundancy employs the property of human visual system the human visual perception will be different for different uh, images or for different uh, parts of the images some information seems to be more important than the other so in by employing this psychovisual redundancy we can achieve compression like this if less data is used to represent a less significant information we can achieve compression so that is a technique we uh, use for compression techniques which uses psychovisual redundancy another type of redundancy is a statistical redundancy statistical redundancy is mainly because of representing this um, uh, this image by using some data so basically these are of two types inter pixel redundancy and coding redundancy so we will see each one in detail when it comes to coding redundancy it's associated with the representation of information usually you will represent information by using codes binary codes for digital nowadays we will be using binary codes for for uh, representing digital images so the, the the redundancy with this the coding scheme is called coding redundancy uh, whereas inter pixel redundancy is due to the correlation between neighboring pixels in an image if the neighboring pixels are um, uh, correlated means if these are not statistically independent if this, the neighboring pixels are not statistically independent there will be a particular redundancy called inter pixel redundancy and this can be again classified into two a spatial redundancy and a temporal redundancy so when it comes to temporal sorry spatial redundancy so it represents the statistical correlation between adjacent pixels in an image so the the spatial redundancy with, will be within an image the correlation between the pixels within an image is called spatial redundancy so to to uh, make use of this redundancy in compression we will represent a particular pixel with the help of neighboring pixels uh, the a particular pixel can be represented as prediction of its neighboring pixels thereby we can achieve um, compression by using spatial redundancy aspects then comes a temporal redundancy so temporal redundancy will be in time domain so if you have a video uh, where the 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 frames are are not purely statistically independent in most of the cases uh, adjacent frames will be correlated so you, by employing this correlation between the adjacent uh, frames in a image will uh, will achieve compression so this type of redundancy is called temporal redundancy it's also referred to as inter frame redundancy so these are the this is the the, the broad um, classification of um, redundancy in image you can take a pause of this video to uh, see in detail the various uh, redundancy schemes so this is being represented here uh, in the upcoming video we will be dealing with the various coding schemes by using this redundancy we can achieve uh, compression 
and uh, each of this coding scheme uh, will help us in doing going forward with the image conversion hope to see you in the next video